Okay, so here's a quick video to show you how to run and debug your application in Linux on Windows using WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux and Visual Studio Code. The application we're going to run and debug today is a .NET C Sharp application, but this should work with anything you're usually able to run in Visual Studio Code using the debugger and all that stuff. All right, so very simple. The first thing we'll do, we'll, we'll open up uh, Visual Studio Code. It doesn't have to be in a particular workspace or folder or anything like that. It's just that we need to install an extension. So you can just open the program and go to the extension panel. And in there, we're going to be looking for WSL. WSL is an official Microsoft extension that is made specifically for the use case of running our stuff in WSL through VS Code. So you want to install that using, I've already installed it, so but you should see an install button here or here. So install that the usual way. Once that is done, you can close VS Code if you want to or leave it open, really doesn't matter. And open up a terminal, terminal window. I already have one here. And we're going to go inside of WSL. Now, if you don't know what WSL is and have it installed it on your system, well, this video is, you know, a few steps <laughs> removed from what you need to be looking at right now. Look, look at videos uh, and do some search online for uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux and how to install it on your system. But once you've, you're done with that, you can do this in the command line. You can type in WSL and it will open WSL, the Windows Subsystem for Linux. At the folder or directory you were at when you did that. So in, in my case, I was on a D drive in the nimble metrics uh, directory. So it opened up a shell at that corresponding path. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we can actually open VS Code from there, from within WSL, the same way we would on the Windows side of things, code space period, which will open up an instance of VS Code in that particular folder. But as you can see, it, ins it, ins it opens up, sorry, an instance of VS Code that's running on WSL Ubuntu, in my case. You can see it here at the top, you can see it here at the bottom, running in Ubuntu WSL 2, it's version 2 of WSL. But as you can see, this is just Visual Studio Code, right? We can tell from the integrated terminal that we're running it in Linux. It's got that Linux path here. But other than that, the UI is exactly the same. Now, there is one thing you want to do before we can actually start with running and debugging and all that stuff. You're, you'll want to go into the extension panel once again. And you'll notice this is a bit different here. We've got a local section and we've got a WSL section. So you want to make sure that you've got your extensions installed on the WSL part of this panel, right? Because it's not guaranteed that your extensions that you had installed on the Windows side of things will be available to VS Code on the Linux side of things. So you need to explicitly install them in this part here. Luckily, Windows has, uh, Microsoft has made this uh, easy for us. There's this little button, this little cloud button that you can click and it'll install all your local extensions in WSL. What you might or might not want to do, you can do it one at a time if, you, if you'd prefer that. This is a .NET C Sharp project, so I've installed a bunch of my preferred extensions for this kind of project. So once you're done with that, you should be good to go. You can use VS Code the exact same way you use it on the Windows side of things. So here's an example. Let's go and debug a test. So actually, I think I actually have it here. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we've got a breakpoint set. We're going to hit debug test. And we can see the output window here. Now you'll probably notice a pop up when you do this for the first time where VS Code is saying, hey, you're running this from like the mounted file system 
for this to be faster, you'd want to move the project to the actual Linux file system or something like that. I forget what the popo is. I haven't bothered with that, but presumably if you find it a little slow, you can do that. Okay. So the tests are... Okay, the debugger's getting started. Yeah, it is a little slower than on the Windows side of things. Here we go. So we've hit our breakpoint. You can step in the way you normally do. So it, it all works the exact same way as we're used to when working in the Windows side of things. Now, what if you want to actually run your application? You can certainly do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that straight from the command line. So we would do uh, .NET run. I'm in the root of my project, so I'm just going to do project source nimblemetrics.api, I believe. Yeah. All right, so it'll build, it'll run, and it will be available in the browser through localhost. So it's pretty cool how all, although it's running on WSL, you know, it's, it's all set up so that you can still interact with everything properly. Here we go. See localhost 5230. If I click on this, well, there's no content and it's just a, an API app here, but we can see that it works by hitting our swagger. Okay. And now what if we want to debug? Yep. We can certainly do that. I've got a configuration for attaching a debugger, so we're going to use that. And if we search for nimble metrics, there we go. So even though it's running on WSL, we can still attach to the process and start debugging it. Oh, here we go. I think we're attached. We've got that little panel here. If we look at the debug console, yep, okay. So let's go back here and try to hit one of my endpoints. API badge forward slash my repo. Now nothing's happening because we've hit our breakpoint. Here we go, right? API badge, that's the one. We can step in, yeah, and this is gonna break because I don't have a database set up on the Linux side. But as you can see, we can run, we can debug bo both our application and our tests using using Visual Studio Code, which I think is pretty darn cool. All right, I, that's it. As simple as that. I hope you found this interesting and useful. If you did, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel.